Hey everyone, so part three of the tutorial here. I'm going to be trying things a little bit differently with this section. Uh, I've actually written out all the code that I want to overview, and I'm just going to be taking you through that code uh, kind of step by step. Hopefully this allows me to be a little bit more streamlined uh, and save some time. With, um, but let me know if you actually like to see me write out the code uh, and if the pacing is better there. Um, as you may remember, in the last tutorial, we set some criteria for our model. Uh, like we said, we wanted the deflection to be a certain amount um, at degree of freedom four. And then we tried out a whole bunch of trial areas uh, and figured out which gave us results that was closest to the criteria that we set out. This time, I wanted to do something pretty similar, uh, but instead of varying the area, we are going to vary the uh, elastic modulus. So, and so we're going to get something like this. If we define this u here, uh, we're going to want some target, which I've kind of arbitrarily chose as 0 0.001. Um, and we're going to run a series of analyses that gives us a displacement closest to this value. Uh, because this is a linear model, I expect we'll have some sort of relationship like this. Uh, this is u and this is e. So immediately just looking at things, um, we're going to need to have some initial like trial value for e, like an e naught. And then we're going to need to have a rule uh, for getting from the first trial value to the second trial value. Uh, so what I've chosen, if this is, say, E1, uh, I've just chosen a exponential rule where E2 will equal 1.01, oh, running out of space, got it, <laughs> E1, uh, or it will equal uh, E1 divided by this, depending on if it's bigger or smaller. I could have chosen a linear rule, um, but I guess my logic was if uh, we could choose, because we don't know the actual E that gives us this displacement, we could be really wrong. Um, and if we choose a linear rule, we could end up doing a, just way, way, way too many analyses. But uh, an exponential rule, we're kind of guaranteed to get there a little bit quicker. And I'm also choosing uh, what I feel like is a pretty small um, growth rate. So hopefully that will, we won't be doing things like overshooting or undershooting too much. Uh, so let's take a look at the code of how I've achieved this implementation. Um, first thing I'm doing is I'm redefining the areas. Uh, I'm then defining these actual values. So the target value that we want, uh, the growth rate that we want, and the tolerance that we want. So at, at every analysis, we're gonna be checking the current model and we're going to see what displacement is actually at node 4 in the degree of freedom 1. And then uh, we will check that against our target value. And if it's within the tolerance, then uh, we know that we're, we're close enough. I define a new analysis name here. This is just so we're not rewriting uh, the old data that we have recorded. So when we can use the old recorder function uh, without rewriting that data. Then in this block, we begin the generation of the, the first trial value of E. So uh, we take the initial E value, we create the model, we create the recorders, we run the gravity analysis, uh, I believe. Oops. Yeah, we run the gravity analysis. Sorry, I had a EX and EY. Uh, I believe this only, we defined it to take PY. Um, and then once we have that, we'll check that initial value. So we, this runs the analysis. Uh, we create this counter. Uh, so this will keep track of how many analyses that we run. Um, and then the criteria that we set for our while loop is while uh, the absolute value of the target displacement minus the current model displacement over here, 
is less than the tolerance that we defined. So in this case, uh, 10 to the negative 6, we will run a new analysis. Um, so what this does is first it increments to find the new E. Uh, so if it's if our old value is smaller, uh, we will divide it. And if our old value is larger, uh, we multiply it. Um, and then we run a new analysis with that value. And then once we are finally within the tolerance, uh, we get out of the loop and we run the pushover analysis or whatever we want to do to our model at that point. Um, so if you run this, it uh, should work. One thing that you could do is uh, if you just want to make sure everything's actually running, uh, let's just output this displacement. Uh, and we can see uh, all the different trial values. Um, let's see. OK, yeah. Uh, we, so we had, if you look in our incrementer, it ran 200 times. Uh, and we can see the final displacement value uh, that we get. So that's that. Um, I think this process, it might seem a little bit strange, uh, and I, I think this probably was not <laughs> a good first place to start if you're uh, new to OpenSeas because you, you see me running these sequence of analyses and it probably just doesn't seem like anything that has any value to you. Uh, and it probably doesn't right now. Uh, <laughs> So not the best place to start, but I do want to think I do want to highlight that this is a really really powerful thing that you can do. Uh, we're we're using, or we're really getting deep into the ability to program analyses, not just run like one single analysis, uh, but be able to like make ad adaptations to our analyses and kind of chain things together in really complex ways. Uh, I think this is something that's really powerful, and I hopefully will do it justice um, in the future. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave things here. And the next few tutorials, I think, are going to be a lot more practical. I'm going to uh, be looking at things like pushover analyses in OpenSeas uh, and also how to get outputs from your file. OK, uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos. And hope you're doing well.